Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow work travelers. Oblix here, back with you today from the ins and outs of immersive engineering. How y'all doing today? So, today, guys, we want to take a look at the lowly, poor, lonely, crude blast furnace. Now, last time we looked at the coke oven and how to automate it. Now, the blast furnace takes iron blocks and iron or iron ingots plus coal coke blocks or coal coke nuggets, pieces, whatever you want to call it. Looks like coal but grayer. Uh, you put those in here, those two items, and you will get out steel and slag. Uh, so it's a, a cheap, easy way to make steel. So remember you get the coal coke from our coke oven here uh, by just burning coal by putting coal in it and letting it burn. And then we'll get use that with some iron to get steel over here. Now, the question is, can you automate it? The answer is no. The crude blast furnace cannot be automated. I've got a similar setup to how we did our coke oven over here. Just to show you, if I turn this on and it starts pumping out the resources that would be used in this machine, you see they don't go in it. It will not suck them up. You have to do this manually. I put a piece of coal or a piece of iron ingot and a piece of coal coke in here. We cooked up a slag and a steel ingot, and we can see it's also not exporting the items out into our uh, crate there. So, no, it cannot be uh, automated. However, there is an advanced version or an improved. This is the improved blast furnace and you need the, uh, the uh, fancier bricks to make it. If we take a look here, uh, we need these reinforced blast brick instead of just the blast brick and we can make this guy. And he's relatively easy, uh, much like our uh, friend right here. It's basically just a three by three and your book will tell you all this you really probably don't need me showing it to you but it only takes a second so I will pop a vanilla hopper on top and hit it in the face with a hammer and you have the improved blast furnace now this guy this guy can in fact be automated now he has two states. He has this state here, which is a simple state, and he is slow. He's much like this guy, and he's very slow in production. We can speed it up in this state. If we put these blast furnace preheaters on either side, you can either put one or you can put two. Two makes it much faster than one. You are gonna have to find a way to power these guys. I'm currently using just a creative capacitor you'll need a diesel generator or some form of power to run these guys off of. And they are not crazy power hungry, but a little bit power hungry. They have nice models though. See the little fans and little tubes that get hot. Pretty cool. Uh, now, we can absolutely automate this bad boy, which I've done over here and it's incredibly simple. We've got our crate with our extracting conveyor belt and I've currently got it turned off with the lever. We're running into a dropping conveyor on the top. You will see there is a slot, that hopper, remember that vanilla hopper we put on top becomes the slot on top. That's where you insert items out, or insert out. You insert items into the improved blast furnace from the top. Both the coal coke and the iron need to be input here. You, from the front of the unit, out of this little nodule here, you are gonna get the uh, steel ingots will pop out of here and slag will come out of its backside. Now, so we've got the slag out the back, steel out of the front. These are for the heaters, the one on each side. The heaters need power, but the oven itself does not. And the inputs are from the top. 
So if I go turn this guy on, you'll see it pumping out some iron and it is not falling off the edge like it did with that one over there. It's getting sucked up. If we go look at it. Yep, it's definitely getting iron. And within a few seconds we should be done with the iron. Let's just pull this out so it'll start with the coke. There we go. Now we're starting to get the coke. Then I'll just pop those back in on that side. That way it goes through the coke first. And we can see he's cooking. And he's actually cooks pretty darn quick with both those heaters on there. Uh, definitely at a reasonable rate. Much better than that guy. And you'll see when he finishes, he just spits his little bits and bobs out onto these conveyors. Here's our slag. And this gives me another good opportunity to introduce you to a new item called the item router. Now what it allows is one input, or multiple, your choice, uh, for items in multiple outputs. So you can have multiple ins, multiple outs, or any combination of the bunch. And it can accept items from every side. You'll notice each side has a different color. So we've got red, yellow, white, green, blue. There's one on the bottom as well. You can feed items into any side you want. Then you can open the interface and you can tell it where to send items out. So what it's doing is it's accepting all the items right now on the yellow. Well, I don't have to tell it to accept items. It just will by nature. But I want the blue to be the steel. And I want the slag to come out of the red. So I just put a piece of steel in the blue and a piece of slag in the red. And it's going to make sure that happens each and every single time. Now you can use OR Dictionary. You can use MBT data. And you can use fuzzy logic with these guys as well. So I could have all manner of different outputs. I could have multiple items coming out of one side. Uh, you know, I could have an item router routed into another item router and split out items even more. Uh, you can get very, very creative with these things. They're very super cool. Uh, you will notice it also has the cardinal directions as well. You know, so the north, south, east, west, bottom, and top, so that you can uh, adjust your settings by that if you prefer. But they also give you the nice colors, which makes it super, super easy. Very handy tool. So yes, you can absolutely automate the improved blast furnace, but not the crude blast furnace. And of course, I've got the output just going into these item silos, which we took a look at in our last uh, session with the uh, Coke oven over there. So we've got 11 steel, 11 slag, all good to go. Now, as we typically do, we want to see if we can integrate these into both our refined storage and our AE2 systems. And the answer, of course, is yes, we can. So here we're using the improved blast furnace because it's the only automatable blast furnace. Remember, the crude one is not. So we're using the improved. And of course, we've got the blowers on there because we want things nice and fast. Just as we did over there, automating with full immersive engineering, we are inserting items from the top. So we've got an exporter from our refined storage system into here. Our refined storage system is just a controller and some creative storage blocks, both fluid and regular, and a creative power source uh, as well. Actually, that's just a creative controller. Uh, so we don't have to worry about power. Uh, in your world, you will have to worry about power, but you're going to have to worry about it here too anyway. So there you go. In this exporter, we're leaving it on items, and we've put coke and iron ingots. So it's going to keep this guy full of these things as long as they're available in our storage system. Now, this is relying on this guy to make us coke. So as fast as he can make coke, he's putting it in the system. It's then exporting it over here. Now, as the steel and slag, here's where the steel would go. Here's where the slag would go. As those get produced, they're getting sucked up by these importers. And you do need two. You need one on the front. We're not changing any of the settings, but we do need one on the front for steel. And we need one on the front for, or on the back, for our slag. And again, we're not changing any settings on that. It's just default. And that's bringing the steel and the slag back into our refined storage system. Uh, so here's our steel, and there's our slag. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, now, with Applied Energistics 2, you will notice one change from our Coke video. 
uh, in that I have switched over to the dense smart cables because I need more channels. AE2 is based on channels where refined storage is not, and you do have to count your channels, so I was getting a little bit low. I needed to, uh, if we're going to keep expanding this project, I'm going to need some more channels, so that'll get us going there. But just like we did with refined storage, we've got an export bus sitting up here on the top, uh, and we've got coke and iron ingots in here. Now, I, you do have to put in a capacity card in order to get this work to work. Without the capacity card, you only get one slot. So you need the capacity card to give you the you know, minimum two slots that you do need. Now, I do recommend acceleration cards on this because the export bus uh, from Applied Energistics is significantly slower than, it, than the one on refined storage. The one on refined storage, I don't have anything in it. It's plenty fast. Uh, this one is not fast enough to keep up with the system without some uh, acceleration cards. You probably don't need all three. You probably could get away with one because it's almost fast enough, but not quite. And then we've got some import buses here, one on the front. We didn't make any changes to it. We've got one on the front for our steel and one on the back for our slag. So those items are getting sucked back into our Applied Energistics 2 system. We can see there's our steel and there's our slag. So, yes, you can automate steel production within refined storage as well as applied energistics using coke oven and the improved blast furnace. Remember, it must be the improved one. Uh, but I do think that is going to do it for this episode. I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. Can I see my face? Thank you. Hey, I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me, as always. And until next time, y'all get out there and make some noise. See ya.